Kia ora, it's Vili Tossi here from Wild Meat Hunter NZ and we're in the kitchen today and uh, we're going to be utilising some of the venison meat uh, that we were able to harvest with our friends uh, from Hunter's Element, Mason and David and also a good mate Aaron. So we, we managed to get a, a red yearling deer and um, we're going to be cooking up uh, I guess one of the favourite cuts for most hunters and that's the back steak. But I'm going to cook it two different ways, um, probably two, two different ways that a lot of people don't think about when, when you're cooking back steak, but certainly something that's real easy uh, and also real tasty as well. So um, come over here and I'll show you, this is how I, um, when I process my uh, meat, I, I vacuum pack it, it just sort of lasts a little bit longer, gives it a bit more um, shelf life and, and freezer life. Uh, and then we've just got a whole range of, of veggies, um, which we're going to use today. Um, and we're going to make a, a roast vegetable um, warm salad uh, with uh, half of the back steak um, for one, one meal. And then, and then we're going to make um, just a simple uh, seared back steak, um, make sure it's medium rare uh, on top of a kumara and potato mash. Uh, and then finish off with some uh, green peas. So real easy recipes, but certainly I guess winter time, nice and warm and um, yeah. It's certainly something that uh, a lot of people uh, will enjoy, uh, you know, cooking and also tasting as well. So a uh, little bit of fruit prep, but like I say, minimal time. Uh, we'll get our pan on, we'll get our oven on, and uh, we should be able to whip through it in hopefully uh, less than 15, 20 minutes. So let's get stuck in. So for the, um, for the salad, we're just going to use um, just your sort of basic root vegetable. Uh, we've got carrot beetroot, um, potato, and, and uh, orange kumara. Um, and then we're gonna throw in some capsicum and red onion there as well. So we're gonna roast that. Um, probably should take about 30 minutes. Um, bit of olive oil and a bit of fresh uh, rosemary. And then once that's sort of golden brown, um, we'll then uh, drizzle it uh, with a bit more olive oil and um, yeah. I guess toss it all together, get our back steak on top and um, break up some blue cheese uh, to, just to sort of finish it off. So, so yeah, the hunt we went on um, just a few weeks ago to harvest this uh, venison was, was an awesome hunt. We, um, we battled some pretty testing conditions um, but managed to secure a nice little red yearling on the last day we were literally about to sort of call it quits and um, yeah managed to spot a hind and a yearling out and uh, managed to tip over the t managed to tip over the yearling which was real nice so a little bit of red meat in the freezer for for winter which was always nice uh, but it was awesome to have mason and and david and hainsey out on that trip um, And um, yeah, obviously with COVID and, and uh, everything that's been going on around the world and uh, in our country, it was sort of nice to get out and about and um, experience a bit more, bit more hunting. Um, been testing times for everyone, I guess. And uh, yeah, just hopefully, hopefully we get through it and uh, we can do a bit more hunting and, and things like that. Before I get this beetroot, I'm just going to get a tray out. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little bit of crushed garlic in there as well. You could put a whole cloves or, or diced up, but so we'll get that in the oven. Um, sort of fan bake for at about 180 to 200 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. So next we're just going to peel um, half of the potato, so we used half for the, the salad and then the other half we're going to use for our mash uh, and it's going to be half, half potato and half orange kumara. Um, so take the skins off for, the, for this one uh, and then just cube them up and then we'll get that into a pot of boiling water, boil that until they're all nice and soft uh, and then we'll give it a mash and um, that's pretty much the main veg that we'll, we'll use for our second dish, which is just a nice uh, seared 
back stake um, that will rest and make sure it's medium rear and we'll rest that over the over the mash and we'll have some nice creamy uh, mushy peas with that as well so so we're just going to make our um, berry sauce now I've just gone with um, just some frozen mixed berries but just because obviously berries aren't in season at the moment so um, using frozen ones um, is just as good as so using fresh berries is ideal but but we'll just utilize the um, frozen bag Now the amount that we'll probably make um, will probably be too much for the dish that we're making, but it's always um, good to have a little bit left over. So you could um, you could almost um, you know anything that you've got left over you could probably put in a in a dish and, and freeze it. And next time you want to impress uh, family or friends with a nice rich berry sauce, you could pull it out and defrost it. So. So now um, we've got our berry sauce just simmering away um, and, and that'll probably just continue to simmer for about five minutes. It'll start to really thicken up and um, become real rich. We've got our um, veggies, our mash, um, that's just about finished uh, boiling and our roast veggies which, uh, which isn't too far away as well. So we're probably ready um, to start prepping our, our venison back steak. Um, and we're just gonna use um, one half and then we're going to split that into half um, and one half we're just going to sear just as is um, you know both sides and then whack it in the oven for about three to four minutes um, just don't want to overdo it uh, we'll let it rest for a good five minutes uh, and then when we cut it open it should be beautiful and pink uh, and then the other half that we'll do for our mash and berry sauce is I'm just going to rub it in um, like a, a, a nutmeg spice um, it just gives it a different flavour, a different, um, different context, um, which, which will be, you know, it'll go beautifully with, with the rich berry sauce. So i um, just going to get into my vacuum packed bag. Um, and this venison here, um, which is a back steak, uh, most, or well, every back steak that you have, It'll just have a bit of sinew on the back, so you just want to make sure before you cook it um, that you just sort of take, slice that, that sinew off. Uh, I do that before I vacuum pack it, but if, if you don't take that, that sinew off, when you go to cook it, um, it'll just be a little bit chewy. So, so make sure, you can kind of see a little bit there. Um, so all we want to do is just get our knife in behind it and just take that out. Actually mash the berries so that you're getting it all in there and the only thing that should be sort of left over that isn't mashed is obviously the star anise and the cloves but you can just see oh, it's just starting to get real thick um, and it's like a beautiful real dark rich red color um, so that's exactly what we want beautiful so we're just going to use one half keep that over there so we're going to sear that just as is and then the other part um, this part here, we're going to rub, um, put a nutmeg on it. Doesn't matter if you get the spice on the board, you can actually roll it around. Beautiful. So now we'll just um, crank up a pan. Um, the piece of back sack that doesn't have the spice on it first um, so it doesn't get any spice on it and then um, we'll do our second piece of uh, back steak uh, last. I guess some people um, don't like blue cheese. Uh, you could swap this out for something like feta um, and then we've just got some pumpkin seeds uh, that we'll sprinkle over top as well. 
it's a bit of a cardinal sin not uh, seasoning your venison. Um, so yeah, make sure that you definitely, definitely season your venison towards the end there. So we're just about ready to plate up. So um, our venison probably about a couple of minutes away and then we'll rest that. Uh, our veggies are all done. I'm about to mash up our potato and uh, sweet potato uh, and then we're good to go. So start piecing it all together. This stage we'll, we'll season the venison, so just a bit of salt and pepper over top. There you have it, uh, two beautiful venison backsteak dishes. Uh, we've got seared uh, backsteak rolled in nutmeg, uh, served on a bed of kumara um, and potato mash, side mushy peas with our rich uh, berry sauce. So. Um, really happy with the, how that turned out. Um, the berry sauce is really beautiful and rich and, and uh, will certainly complement the venison. Uh, and our second dish is our warm roasted uh, venison salad um, and with uh, pulled or, or sprinkled uh, blue, blue cheese. So um, really easy, simple dishes. Um, and, and like I say, um, something that, um, you know, if you've got a bit of venison in the freezer, whether or not you've been given it or been lucky enough to get out and harvest it, give these dishes a go. I'm sure um, whoever you put them in front of, um, they'll be wowed and they'll certainly uh, love the end result. So nothing more to do than to get, have a taste and, and make sure that it um, tastes as good as what it looks. But to complement uh, these two dishes, the team from Deep Creek uh, have sent us down a hazy IPA. Uh, they've said that uh, this beer here goes well with um, seared uh, venison uh, steak. Um, so we're going to enjoy these two dishes um, with a beautiful uh, hazy Deep Creek IPA. So here we go. <coughs> venison is cooked beautiful, medium rare, nice and pink in the middle. Get a bit of that berry. Yeah, that's real good. That berry sauce is so good. Blue cheese. Blue cheese is just starting to melt because the roast veggies and the steak is still warm. Mmm, so good. Well, there you have it, uh, two amazing dishes. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Wild Meat Hunter NZ in the kitchen. Um, make sure you send us through some photos of you cooking uh, some of the re recipes that we've been able to put out there for you. Um, we look forward to uh, getting in the kitchen again and whipping up some exciting, easy and delicious recipes for you. So cheers guys. <laughs>